Okay, so today's video is all gonna be about the new Blazer Nero Anamorphic. Well, somewhat new. It came out like a few months ago, but new to me. I just ended up um, getting it a couple weeks ago, I think. 1.5 times anamorphic squeeze. Um, now, the reason why this has so many pros and so many cons on this lens or on this anamorphic attachment is because it has so many great features about it and there's so many not great features about it. Now we're gonna start about the not so great features about it. Now, this is only from my kind of real use of what I feel like I don't like about this attachment. Now everyone might have their own different opinion. By all means, that's great. Now this is why I just feel like this has a negative aspect on this anamorphic attachment. Uh, the number one and most highly no, voted number one feature that I think this it brings this anamorphic attachment um, a little lower than most out there is the I don't want to say bad but it's very noticeable CA that this anamorphic attachment kind of produces um, now you can see it in certain shots and some shots you don't see at all it all depends on what you're shooting and what you're using as your taken lens now most of my stuff I love using my super multi-coated tachymer lens because I just feel like it has a lot of um, it has a lot of features to this lens. It's got a lot of character already, even without using an anamorphic attachment. Well, like I said, it's not very bad, but whatever, it's there. Um, and then another one is that it's not sharp around the entire image, which it, it's something that we're gonna get on a budget anamorphic lens. Like, come on, this thing's only $1,200. Now, in my opinion, it's actually only sharp in the center and on the sides, you can kind of see it's very, very distorted or very blurred. Um, the distortion we're gonna get from the anamorphic look, um, but it's actually a little bit more notice noticeable blurry than more of what the character is gonna give us. Um, now, those are the only two that I find that I got uh, using this anamorphic attachment. Now, we're gonna get into the advantages or one of the pros that this attachment has. Now, I feel like there's more pros than cons of uh, using this lens or the lens in general or attachment, I should say. Um, one, the weight. Um, I don't know the exact weight of it. Um, I'll post it here if I can find the weight, but it's very light. Um, now, the size of it, it's pretty small in size as well. So now if you find yourself doing a lot of gimbal work and you wanna do anamorphic gimbal stuff, this lens is gonna be the one for you. Um, now, the one thing about that is that it does not have internal focusing. So when you do focus, you do have the inside of the lens coming out. So it could kind of throw off the whole balance of the gimbal. Um, but another advantage that I think that this lens has is the price. Now, when this lens came out, I believe it was $1,200 Canadian. Um, I think the price is going to be going up as well. Not too sure when, but I've heard it's going to. Um, I think the $1,200 Canadian was, Canadian was like an early bird price for this. Um, now the flare color, I'm pretty sure it's like a blue flare. Now from when I shot, I didn't really get any flares because I didn't really shoot into a strong light source. Another cool feature that this anamorphic attachment has is that it has a little button here. So it allows you to get a quick alignment while it's on the camera. So you know your attachment is gonna be perfectly straight and you're not gonna have a crooked image. Um, another cool thing is that it's got measurements here in feet and meters. Um, I find that super cool. Um, and then another thing is that it's got actual focus gears on the actual anamorphic attachment itself. So now one cool thing that this attachment comes with is a way to mount it. Now you can mount it two options. You can mount it by using threads or adapters to attach it to your taken lens, or you can mount it by using the collar or um, whatever you want to call us, putting it onto like a rod system, which is what I do because I've learned from the past that if you mount this onto your, your taken lens, you can ruin the threads. And then once you ruin those threads, you're kind of toast for using any other anamorphic attachment, um, which has happened to me by using my super multi-coated tachymer, which is why I've came to this solution, which I use the small rig. This was for the mat box, I believe, small rigs mat box. So I, I just attach it on to here. And then this is my 
base plate where I attach my camera or your rod system, whatever you're using. And then I can just kind of, if I need to change my taken lens, I just loosen this, take out the taken take lens, and then replace it with another taken lens. And then I can just mount this back and then I'm good to go. Instead of finding different thread sizes or attachments, whatever you're using to attach to your taken lens, um, I find this solution to be a lot faster, easier, and you're not gonna ruin your taken lens. Um, now, you might have ruined your taken lens. I would highly recommend going this option because it's much faster. I've used many other different anamorphic adapters, um, such as the Avascope, the anamorph, the 40 Anamorphot by SLR. Um, now, if I'm going to compare this, I would say the main competitor to this anamorphic adapter would be the Avascope. Um, now, the Avascope has advantages over this one. Um, but it also has disadvantages as well. Um, one of the advantages is that it's more sharper around the entire image. Um, I, I feel like the distortion on the Avascope is somewhat better than the, the Nero, um, but also the Avascope costs like around, I, I believe it was 33 or $4,000. And then it was also like $500 in duties. So at that, when you add everything up, you're close to like 5,000 bucks. Um, and then also, uh, Avascope is a lot, and I mean a lot heavier than the Nero. Um, so if you plan on doing gimbal stuff as well, I would highly uh, recommend maybe going a different route. Um, it is hard to shoot on the Avascope with going on a gimbal. Um, it's gonna be very front heavy. Um, but the glass on the Avascope is very nice. The amber flares were, were beautiful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up some uh, Avascope footage. Uh, yeah, so that is the Avascope. Now, if, I mean, each lens is gonna have their pros and cons. Now the Avascope, I, I believe had very to little no CA that was noticeable. The only time I can notice, notice the CA on the Nero, Blazer Nero, is, you know, especially when you're shooting through trees and then you have a blue sky in the back, background, you can kind of see like the highlight. Um, and then also, like I was talking about, you can see how it's not sharp on in, in the entire image. But I mean, that's what we're gonna get when we're only paying a thousand dollars for an anamorphic scope. Like you're not gonna get a perfect lens. Now, some people might even like that character and, and that's why people end up shooting anamorphic stuff because it just creates that character, it creates that mood. It sets you into that time of, of whatever you're shooting. I would highly recommend this because this is going to give you such more of a better, anamorphic look it's going to give you more of that teardrop uh bokeh it's going to give you a lot more distortion and plus it's a 1.5 times squeeze which is going to lead me to another advantage which i forgot to bring up is that you can shoot this on cameras that do not have an anamorphic um de-squeeze option such as the a7 IV um and all the other cameras besides the fx3 and those higher end cameras because those just came out with a new update um, but because I would recommend this by shooting on one of those cameras or a camera, something similar that doesn't have a de-squeeze option is because it's a 1.5 times squeeze. So you're not actually squeezing a lot. You're only squeezing very little to the point where it's actually still viewable. It's noticeable. Um, you can even crop in. Now, if you're shooting a two times anamorphic, uh, lens or scope attachment, you're gonna be getting a very wide image, which you're gonna to have to crop in and you're using a lot of image on the side. As to where the 1.5, you're not losing much. Um, I actually shot this and I would actually recommend shooting this on full frame cameras that don't have a de-squeeze option, which is weird. Um, you just get a different look, you get a bigger depth of field. So that's it for today's video. Um, if you guys like this footage, let me know in the comments or if you've guys used another anamorphic adapter that you guys would recommend as a starter who is getting into the anamorphic stuff, drop that link below. Let me know what you guys are shooting on. Um, and until then, we'll see you guys on the next video.